Hi everybody, Paul from Manchester Scale Modeler, welcome to another review. Um, today we've got a review um, of, well it's a couple of kits I picked up recently, I'm going to review this one. It's a special hobby, uh, 148 scale, very Firefly. I got the U Mark 8 and the AS Mark 7, uh, which is the anti-submarine version and the drone version. Now, special hobby, um, they're a short run kit manufacturer, uh, which is a subsidiary I believe of M... MPM models uh, in the Czech Republic, I think it is, off the top of my head. Um, now, short run kits, uh, they're generally made on less higher quality uh, molds. I'll just read something off that's on their site. So, MPM, the company themselves, is a series, uh, this series is mainly produced using galvanized metal molds, and the result of the service life of these molds is much longer compared to short run molds and is devoted to aircraft kits. That's the main company, MPM. Uh, special hobby, this series is a popular line of aircraft kits produced using short run moulds and supplemented with photo etching resin parts. The service life of these moulds is around three years, so they're basically limited run kits. Um, because the short run kits, the moulding is not as good, it's not going to be as shake and bake kit. It's going to be a little bit more required uh, from you from the modelling side to get it together. Um, but I've had a look, um, they seem okay. A little bit rough and ready, uh, there's no locator marks in the fuselage, things like that. But, interesting subject, and I was quite surprised at the kit, to be honest. Like I said, I got both. Um, I'm going to review this one, and build this one as well. Love the look of this. Um, so, we'll get this one out of the way. They're almost identical kits inside, obviously, just slightly different variants. Um, which is what brings us to that. So, I just put my phone out of the way, because I was reading off my phone. We go over cameras, you can see the box art, beautiful box art, fantastic looking plane. Now I believe these drones, uh, they were radio controlled, uh, unmanned, and they were used as target practice for surface to air, or sea to air, missiles, I think it was. I think it tells you in the instructions, it might actually tell you on the side somewhere, nope it doesn't say a thing. Um, so the kit number is SH48166, like I say they come out of the Czech Republic, uh, the boxes are very nice actually, high quality, there's nothing on the back. Just a bit of information on the side, limited edition, plastic model kit, the number, and warning kit, just warnings on the other side, nothing really there at all. Czech Republic, um, and that's it, so cmkkits.com if you want to have a look. So, like I say, very striking box art, this is what drew me to this, I saw the other one first, I saw this, it looks very striking, I need to make that, so I went out and bought it. So, let's open up and see what we've got. Now, before we get on with this as well, I want to try something new today. I've not done it before. Um, I'm going to review this, uh, not release the review straight away. I'm going to build it, and then we'll come back and add the build to the end of the review, and I'll see how we got along, any pointers, anything I found a problem. Um, and that's how I'm going to do so. I'm going to review it, and then we'll come back, hopefully, a couple of weeks, uh, maybe a bit longer, depending on how much this kicks my ass, uh, and we'll see how we got on and uh, we're going to try this every now and then for a review I'll review stuff and build it and we'll come back and it's a kit slash well, build review so not only do you get the contents reviewed I'll tell you how the kit built up as well so in the box there is one large bag containing plastic canopies we have a sealed bag of decals we have one instruction book and that's it so not a huge amount in the box um, they are up here. This I think I bought this. Got them both from me models, and I think they're about twenty-seven pounds each, which isn't bad. Uh, like I say, I was pleasantly pleasantly surprised when I opened it up. Um, so it was a great uh, bonus I found in a minute, which we'll get to. Um, history on the front, if you can see that. Uh, so with the growing need, sorry, the still growing threat from service submarines in the nineteen fifties. The Royal Navy was urgent need of suitable anti-submarine anti aircraft. The development of the Furry Gannet had been delayed, and so a new version of the Furry Fighter and Grand Cat aircraft was ordered. This new version, known as the AS Mark VII, was to be manned by a crew of three, because two operators were needed for the anti-sub missions. The aircraft was developed in two versions, for combat and also for training purposes. In comparison to the other versions, the AS Mark VII was equipped with a larger wing and tail fin, the nose section with a bulky radiator, housed a new version of the Griffin engine, Mark 59, the aircraft flew unmanned. Uh, 
Um, the Ace Mark 7 anti-submarine version was soon replaced with anti-sub Avengers and later also with Gannets and consequently the Fireflies were handed over to training units where they were known as the Firefly T7. As the Fireflies are still quite new machines, they found a new role also as remotely controlled aircraft that served as targets for the new Royal Navy anti-aircraft missiles. Anti-aircraft missiles, so yeah, sea to air missiles. Uh, the first machine to be rebuilt to the Firefly U-8 standard flew for the first time at the end of 1953. The rebuilt machines also got a striking anti-camouflage scheme and were used mainly at Clambida base in Wales, but also over Malta. Uh, the very last of Fireflies was shot down in December 1961. Uh, to a 13.57 meter length, 12.2 meter, sorry, 13.57 meter wingspan, 12.2 uh, uh, meter length, maximum speed of 483 kilometers an hour, maximum height of 7,772 meters, uh, one point f just shade under 1.4 kilometers uh, range. So there you go. Don't really read it off, but this I found this really interesting. So we'll, re we'll read it off. I'll get you instructions later on. I just wanted to read that a little bit off at the beginning. So, in the bag, everything's boxed, sorry, bagged together. It's a bit of a pet hate, and I have taken the fuselage off the sprues because I wanted to have a little look to see. Uh, I could have switched it out with the other caper of floss, so that we'll be honest. So, you've got the fuselage, that's the sprue the fuselage came off. So, there's one, two, three, four, five, six sprues, two are identical. We have canopies, there is plastic, and two vac form in there, another nice surprise. And the other thing I didn't know to come with it, you've got a resin wheel bait, two resin exhaust, and some resin bits and bobs for the fuselage there, so fantastic. So for 27 quid, you get a kit, two vac form canopies, and a bit of resin. Not bad, not bad at all. So we'll pop those in there for now. We'll get to this in a bit. What we'll deal with first, I'm just gonna move some of these out of the way. Is we'll deal with the fuselage sprue. So, fuselage, as you can see, it's a good length of aircraft. It is probably, oh, this piece of plastic there. Ooh, piece of candy. Um, the fuselage itself is about 21 and a half centimeters long. Add a few bits and bobs, it's 22 centimeters long. Looking at the fuselage, there's mold release on it. I can see that straight away. So, this thing will be given a thorough washing, which I never normally do, but I can see this thing is covered in mold release. For a short run kit, the detail's not bad at all. Some of the rivet detail, a little bit shallow and a little bit basic, but other than that, not too bad. Panel lines are really good. They're not deep, they're not trench-like at all. They are very nice. Uh, interior details, as it is, is very sparse, but I've seen uh, what's in the kit, and there's a lot of sideboard detail to add, which we'll see in the instructions in a bit. So it's nothing to be really complained about. But overall, the moulding, it's not bad at all. Same on the other side. I've got a few more uh, hatches and whatnot on the front. You can see them there, the difference to the other side. Now, no locator pin marks. So this is going to test your modelling a little bit more than a shake and bake kit. And I have built quite a few shake and bake kits lately. Uh, a couple of new Airflix. New, Airflix? Uh, Airflix. <laughs> Airfix new tools and uh, Hasegawa Typhoon and Tamiya's 40 scale mosquito and they're all shake and bake really easy kits to build so I saw these and I thought you know what let's test the old modeling skill and let's see how we get along but if you line this up even though there's no locating marks there's gaps galore it's going to be definitely going to be a filler queen but get some gentle clamping in there it's not actually that bad. I'm going to leave a bit of filler here and there. Once you get it all lined up, clamped, then glue it. I don't think she's going to be that bad. Uh, on the top. My god, it's fiddly to line up. Again. Oh, my life. See what I mean? I test your modeling skill, I test your bloody patience. As soon as I get this lined up, it's going to slip again. There we go, that'll do. So again, front, not that bad. If I clamped that, I'd be fine. The centre, again, fine. And the back, it's actually not bad at all. I've, to be honest, I've had high-end kits worse than that. So that's not bad at all, really. The fuselage isn't too bad. Other parts on the fuselage sprue, um, again, mould release. 
is pretty evident everywhere as that wood pigeon outside agrees. Um, you can see where some of the mouldings let down a little bit. I know it's not important, but inside there you can see the course of the moulding in here. I'm assuming that's a uh, rest of hook. It's not the greatest, but other than that, it's clean, it's crisp, there's no flash. There's a bit of burring and a bit of marring here and there. Just You can see it inside the recess, recess details. It's not the smoothest of plastic, but there's no flash at all uh, on any of the parts. So there's one little bit there, it's nothing major. A little bit on the sprues themselves, we've got uh, a to part of the uh, cockpit itself. Bit of detail there, machine that's a radiator or something there. Not too bad, not too bad at all for one of the first sprues. Second sprues up, these are identical, we've got two of them, the H sprue. So we'll just deal with one. On this we have what looks to be parts, I haven't got a clue what they are. Some sort of fan, so whether that's a, a fan for coolant or whatnot, I'm not sure. I'm going to zoom out a little bit on that. Uh, we've got smaller parts here, which again, if we come right in, there's no flash on there, so the moulding's really good. Again, evidence of mould release is going to be everywhere with this thing, so this needs a good clean. We do have a bit of flash on these parts here. And again, no locating points on any of the sprues, so anything that's joined together, you're going to have to be careful to line up yourself. But overall, again, no problems there. Couldn't tell you what half those parts are. Uh, that looks like a megaphone, but I've no idea. But the quality of the moulding isn't too bad at all. This is one of Special Hobby's newer releases, so whether they've upped the game a little bit, I don't know. I can't comment. Uh, maybe I need to buy one of their older ones uh, to pass judgments, and I might even do that, just for the sake of getting it. Um... <clears throat> Sprue G. Now that's the other thing on this as well, none of the parts are numbered. So you've either got to know what they look like or use the reference in the instruction book to find them. Again, not much of a problem, but just bear it in mind. Now we've got landing gear, wheels, nicely detailed. They are actually really nice. Um, not too bad at all. I must have moved my camera because I can't get it where I want it. That's probably all right. Nice detail on the wheels. Again, lots of small little parts. There's the rear landing wheel there. Lots of small little parts. We've got some machine gun barrels, uh, landing gear covers, probes, cross members, etc. They are all crispy molded propeller hubs. Uh, if we get onto like this instrument panel, that is brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. I'm assuming there's a decal in there. There's another one there as well. Sidewall detail, as I said, and it is really nicely done. I've seen worse in a Tamiya kit, so the moulding's not bad at all. Tiny parts again, hooks, etc. Really crisply done. Quite impressed, to be honest. I am quite impressed. Takes a lot to impress me, um, but that doesn't look too bad at all. Um, I'll be grabbing that one, and we'll get onto the wings. And uh, we're through the plastic. <laughs> so we've got the horizontal stabilizers, elevators, nose cone, props, um, seats. Seats aren't too bad, need a bit of clean up. Cockpit frame, again, this one is a bit flashy, this sprue. The prop's quite nice. Again, not too bad at all. Um, again, we go to the Panel line detail, it's good. So you can see any mould release on there, there's a little bit there, you can see it. Just bear it in mind when you buy it. Um, nose cone, again, it is marred, a little bit of mark in there on it. But overall, can't unfold to the props. There's a set of two props there, I'm not sure why, I'm assuming to a different variant, so we'll find out the instructions. And again, gun barrels, other various components, I'm assuming that's a drop tank or something on the back. And again, no problems there at all. A little bit of flash, a little bit of clean up. Some of the details are a little bit vague in places, but stuff like the panel lines, they're really well done. I'm really quite impressed by that. Not bad at all. Like I say, maybe I'll go buy one of Special Hobby's older kits and we'll see how they compare. So, we've got upper and lower wing sections. Again, no locating points at all to line up. So you have to line up yourself. Check the pin marks are inside. We've got the resin wheel bay to fit in here. We'll try that in a minute and see how that actually fits in there. And again, details a little bit soft in places inside, 
but on the outside a bit of rough plastic a bit of marking here and there but overall I can't really fault that at all it's quite a big aircraft it's got a good wingspan on it yeah, it's about the wingspan I said I think it was, was it 14 meter wingspan so in model of money it makes sense to be about 28 centimeters sorry yeah, 28 centimetres, nearly a foot wide, so it's a big plane. It's big, it's got deep wings as well. Very deep wings. But again, the panel lines are good. We're coming on the closer camera. They're not bad at all. What are these are going to line up like, I've got no idea. I'm not going to cut these off the sprue yet. We'll come back at the end once we've built it and discuss that. Certainly a key point. But there you go. So there's the plastic. Um, if I move some of this out of the way, we'll grab the resin, because this is one thing I want to try, is that wing. So the resin, we have four plugs, I'm sure that one's off, so we have a wheel bay, we have two quite nicely done exhausts, there's going to be a pig to cut off though, but they're quite well done, show how they fit in, what actually needs removing there, but there's two of those, they're quite nicely done. We have some other small components, look like scoops, small parts, etc. There. So again, even the resin's a little bit rough and ready as well. It's going to be a bit of clean up. It's a bit vague in detail to some of the bigger manufacturers. And the wheel bay itself. I was hoping to try this in, but I don't think we're going to because it's still a large plug. And I'm not cutting it off. Which way around does that go? I have absolutely no idea. Let's just pop it in so I'll do it the other way. Yeah, we've had taken the plug off, we don't know. Well, we'll find out when we come to build it. So there's the resin part, so nice touch. It is a little bit rough and ready, there's a little bit of detail inside the wheel bay. You could spice it up a little bit, adding some wire and what have you in there, but you know, it's a bonus to come with the kit. I, I didn't know it came with the kit, I'll admit. I didn't really research it. I saw uh, the drone version, kind of thought, oh, really want to build that. Bought it blind, uh, which is quite unlike me, to be honest. Uh, I'm not sure what that's off, but we'll keep it just in case. You never know. Uh, bought it blind, didn't research it at all. And it come, and I opened the box, and I was like, oh, right. Vac form canopies and resin. Well, that's not too bad, then. But there's got to be a reason we've been given the vac form canopies. So, we have two identical back forms, nice and clear, not too thick, so they shouldn't give us any trouble at all. Um, now, whether you've got the provision to use the clear parts or the back form, I'm not entirely sure. I've been having trouble making head and tail of what we've actually got, but we've got, there we've got two front canopies there. Or what, but the clarity, it's a bit ropey, I'm going to admit that. There's a lot of distortion, um, a lot of magnification, even a close close quarter, so it's not the best plastic at all. It's clear, it's just distorted, that's the thing. But again, I had an Airfix canopy um, a couple of weeks back that was ten times worse than this, so as long as it fits then you can live with that. But these are the place pieces that are going to be you can replace with the vac form so they'll be definitely getting replaced. The front screens I'm going to guess you're pretty much stuck with. We've got two different types, one bubbles out. I know, they look identical. Hard to tell. I don't know anything about the subject whatsoever. So unless the instructions tell us otherwise at this moment in time I have no idea. I'll report back at the end of the review. But the vac form canopy is nice decals. Now it's one large decal sheet in a proper sealed bag which is good. No staples. You can put it back in and keep them protected. Mm, not the best decals. They appear to be in register. Some of the writing's a bit thick and blocky here and there. Whether it should be, I don't know. The roundels don't look too bad. What they're going to lay down like, I don't know. They're probably going to be thick as hell. Um, but we'll soon see. There's no manufacturer on this. It must be printed in-house. 
Um, the, the number markings are a bit strange how they're done like that in multiple markings, multiple pieces. Um, I have no idea why that's done like that. But I know there's three digit numbers on the bottom of these, so that's going to take quite a bit of work to get all that off. Um, it's certainly be interesting. They don't look too thick, to be fair. But until they get one off, I'm not going to know. Um, but I've seen, again, I've seen a lot worse Got instrument displays there. No steps. You can read them all. They're all legible. So I have seen a lot worse, but the proof is in the pudding. And as soon as you start to take them off the back and paper, that's when you know what you've got. And it may be a case of sourcing aftermarket decals for it. There's nothing there I can see that's going to be specific for this aircraft. Just generic numbers, generic stencils, roundels, which I've got anyway. So if you do need to replace them, it shouldn't be the end of the world. Um, but yeah, I don't hold much hope for them. We'll see. And again, you can buy a high end. 132 Tamiya kit and the decals are shocking. So if they come off, I'll be happy. At the end of the day, if they're any thicker than those Academy ones are than my Hellcat, which it actually took a UMP sander to. Um, if they're no thicker than that, I can live with them because I sanded those down thinner before I clear coated them. So instructions um, on the back, we've got the uh, colour call out and the decal locations. We've already read this. We'll, we'll hover over it again. So if you want to read it, pause it. We've already, We've already read, read it, it though. I'm not going to bore it again. Open it up, you've got your uh, sprue layout of everything in there. So these are all numbered now. So if you look in the numbers and you can't identify the part, look on the sprue, the sprue guide here, look for it, and you can identify it then as well. You've got symbols, so optional, instant CA glue, bend, scratch build, oh, that sounds promising, uh, cut off drill, and a colour. Now the colours are supplied by Gun Sanyo, they are in Mr. Acuous and Mr. Colour. So that's quite nice, they're the colours there that you require and like I say all the parts are clearly labelled on the sprue map and even the parts not required are crossed off so you're going to get a few spares which might come in handy for um, the other one I've got there's the canopy there so we're not using that one we're using this one and either that if we're having it open I assume, I don't know or that we'll be having it closed if I was going to have it open I'd still cut that rather than use that kit one um, yeah, and that's it really, so not much there. Instructions themselves, uh, quite a surprise again. Uh, quite nicely done, coloured, almost CAD drawings. Uh, nice and clear, not too busy. So all your colours are called out with a paint dropper colour. All the parts are detailed. You can see clearly what's what. They are all labelled. If you go back for that sprue guide at the front, you can figure out what's what. And as you can see, that side wall, just as close to the camera, goes to the side wall. It's got a lot of detail added to it. So although, though it's sparse at the box, you can add a lot of detail to it in the first place. So it will look good once you build it up. Uh, double cockpits, obviously, because it's the uh, the drone version and it's a twin, twin canopy plane. But both sides are fairly well uh, detailed with extra parts. So that's going to look quite good when it's lined up. Quickly, as soon as you've got the cockpit done, you skip straight to having the fuselage buttoned up. Um, and then getting the wings on, the resin uh, wheel bay in there, the uh, horizontal stabilizers on the back. Uh, then we're on to landing gear. Again, nice clear, really, really are quite nice instructions actually. They're quick, simple, and to the point, there's no mucking about there. Um, fairly easy to follow by the look of it as well. So, quite good. Again, through to the back, nothing to trouble you on there. Canopies, so yeah, it's saying if you want that open, use the top one, if you want to close, use that, but I'd still be tempted to cut that. You've got two of them, so if your ball's one up, you've got another go at the end of the day. Um, scratch wheel, there you go, there's a scratch wheel symbol to make your antenna wire. Z. My bad, there's any more of those in there? Let's have a look for that. That little blue, sorry, green box to see what else it wants us to scratch build. I'm hoping it's just going to be that. It is. So I just wanted to build the antenna wire markings, and this is what drew me to this kit, this very striking uh, red over cream uh, colour. So you've got post office red, uh, whether that's an official colour, uh, you don't know. C308, I can see it. Oh, I can't trust my camera. Oh, my light's to be in the way. 
So yeah, called Mr. Color C08 and then Signal Yellow Drone Cream, which is H318. Which is a radon colour. Okay. We can figure that out and see if anyone does a specific match for it. But it was this scheme that actually drew me to this and it looks very striking like this. Uh, how many times these things were flown before they were blown out of the sky? I am not sure. I'll look into that because if they're fairly new, they're not going to be that weathered really. So we'll pair that by ear. But as you can see, there's those underwing markings. So three did six digits, uh, six numbers. So that's going to take a lot of work to uh, decolor all those multiple parts. But it's uh, fairly simple. So what have we got? You have uh, Firefly Drone WM8. 2-3 RAE based at RAE Clan Bedra, I can't say that word, Wales. Um, this drone crashed on the 20th of June 1957 during landing. During landing, rather. Uh, this one, WM856 uh, RAF Clan Bedra, again. Uh, somebody Welsh is going to kill me on that. Uh, the, the third converted drone was expended on the 4th of March 1958 over Cargan Bay. So I assume expended means blown up. And the third one, WM810, same RAF base, I'm going to say it again. Uh, first built drone, uh, WM810, was expended on 27th November, November 1959. So they're all the same schemes, identical, bar that one has an A on the tail, different numbers. I'm going to assume all the stencils are the same. Other than that, they're all fairly generic. So there you go. So, MPM Productions on the back, like I said, and Gun Sanya put the name to them as well. So, overall, for the money, um, I haven't put it together yet. So, before I speak too soon, um, it looks to be a good value kit at £27. You get the backbone canopies, the resin wheel bay, resin parts, resin exhausts. And I know they're to replace parts that either on in the kit or parts that need replacing. But I think it's a nice extra to get, and I was pleasantly surprised when I from the box. Like I said, I've got the other one as well, the Submarine Hunter, which, although I think it's got slightly different wings, it's almost identical in the box. You've got the same back form canopy, the same resin bits, different decals, different instructions. Those decals look almost identical again. So that's it. Again, nice striking uh, colours there, right? the same as that Seafire I did the other week. But for me, I'm going to do this version, uh, the drone. So there you go, there's a review. Um, hopefully I'll be back in a couple of weeks for you, it'll be a few seconds uh, we'll see it all built and I'll be like yeah it was dead easy to build and I really enjoyed it but I get a feeling this is going to test my skills a little bit which is kind of what I want because like I say everything I've built lately has been shake and bake um, so it'll be nice to build something that's hmm, maybe going to be a bit of a pain we'll see, either that or I'll edit this out and we'll just upload the review and I'll put it in the bin we'll see, so hopefully I'll see you in a few seconds Okay, so progress with the build. Uh, today is Friday the 12th of June. Uh, that review was done on Sunday the 7th of June, so it's five days progress here. This is literally all I've worked on uh, every day since then, and this is where we're at now. So the plane, it's very, very nearly ready for primer. I glued the canopies on before, but looking at it, one of the sides isn't quite glued down, so it needs a touch more. Uh, canopy glue on there, a little bit of a clamp, another few hours and then I can prime it. Um, as you can see, it looks like a firefly. It's not been an easy build, but it's not been as tough as I thought it would be. Um, it's definitely not a kit for a beginner. Uh, it's definitely for somebody who kind of knows what they're doing, but it's gone together quite well. Um, quite surprising in areas and disappointing in others. Uh, the wings, wing assemblies, they glue together without problem whatsoever there was one speck literally tiny speck need a little bit of filler on the leading edges other than that no problems whatsoever we've got the camera pods either side as well um, the fuselage itself went together pretty well um, needed a few spots of uh, filler here and there namely on top more than anything and this seam here where the wings attached uh, needed quite a bit of filler as well. And the cockpit went together beautifully. Uh, no real problems at all. Used a kit decal for it. I'll put a slideshow of pictures up uh, just at the end of this to progress through the build. Um, before we come back when I've painted it all and finished it. And we can see it as a finished article. 
But yeah, cop it went together fine. Used the decal instrument, uh, the instrument decal. That one no problem at all. Um, although it looked quite basic out of the box, there's loads of bits to add to it, which made it look quite interesting to be honest. You see them on the pictures, and it came out okay. Uh, the only thing I didn't add was uh, harnesses for the seats. Uh, whether they'd still be in there, I don't know. They probably would be. Uh, maybe it's something I should have added, but I didn't. Uh, I don't think they came with the kit either, any decals. But that's by the by. Uh, as I say, the, the fuselage buttoned up, it glued together quite well. Uh, it needed a lot of clamping, as you'll see in the pictures, but it glued up alright. A little bit of filler here and there. Um, the elevators and the rudder, um, the rudder's actually twisted. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it leans to the left. It's like the whole back end is slightly warped, but not much we can do about that. I didn't notice till quite a way into the build but it is quite badly warped but it's just one of those things um, wing roots now this is where the problems arose uh, we had terrible gap here a gap there uh, this side here and this side at the front uh, I actually had to raise up um, the gap between the lower and uh, upper and lower wing sections there's a gap in between as normal when you glue them uh, this is a resin insert. I had to put a bit of square plastic card in there to push it up to make them meet the top of the roots. Uh, it was then clamped at the living hell out of, glued, filled uh, with plastic card all along there, underneath at the back, uh, filled, sanded, and this is where we're at now. Test all the seams with black paint. What it's going to look like when it's primed, I don't know, but I will find out very soon. And fingers crossed it's going to look acceptable, I hope so, because there's a lot of hard work. Like I say, five days solid, uh, it's the only model I've worked on in those five days, so hopefully it'll look okay. So there you go. Uh, other than that, the only problem is, those parts not being labelled on the sprues is a pain in the backside. As you can see some Mr. Service are there. Going back and forth all the time in the instruction book to find parts on the sprue, that was the, probably the most annoying part about the kit. But other than that, quite surprising. The other thing we've got, we've got the prop, the nose cone. The wheels I have flattened myself. If we go to this close-up cam, heated them up, melted them, pressed them down on something firm, and we put a flat in the wheels. Uh, the propeller went together with no real problem. Four individual props glued on, nose cone and again. We've got all the rest of the landing gear to sort out. Uh, but like I say, we're very nearly ready for paint. So you need to finish off that fuse, uh, canopy. A little bit of filler in the canopy as well, but there's a few gaps. And we'll get on, get it primed. So when I come back, this will be all complete, and we'll see what she looks like. Okay, so this is ten days after the review. It's the 18th of June, uh, and well, 10 to 9 at night. And I've literally just put the finishing touches on this. Uh, it's probably three days. I can't remember the date on the last uh, the update before we went to paint. Uh, three days since then, or four days maybe. Um, this is where we're at. Like I say, 10 days in total to build, paint, weather, um, the kit. It wasn't too bad. I've built a lot worse in the past, uh, but I've also built better as well. Definitely not a kit for a beginner. Uh, definitely somebody who's got uh, good basic modelling skills because this will test it. Uh, like I said in the other updates, the build was quite good. There was a few bits here and there that needed a little bit of attention. Were overall uh, not too bad at all. The painting uh, and weathering, great. Uh, the painting, very simple scheme. It's a cream over a red. Uh, I'll show you on the overhead. You can see so got the cream overhead on the wings and the red on the sides and underneath too. So I had to mix both these colours because there's nothing uh, off the shelf I could find that fitted those. So that uh, the cream on top is a mixture of Tamiya. Uh, XF2 and the flesh tone, which is X XF15. Just a touch of the flesh tone in to give that cream colour. Um, that was then um, lightened and darkened to post. Uh, sorry, to fade, bleach, etc. No pre uh, post shading. Let the pre shading show through. Quite difficult to see with being white, but the effect is there. Um, I've then gone over the white with watercolour pencils and pigments to again give tone of aeration. The camera does struggle to pick it up a little bit to be honest. Uh, and all the white surfaces, or the whole aircraft was given a UMP concrete wash which has really accentuated uh, all those uh, panel lines etc. Um, the underneath colour was uh, Tamiya oh God, XF7 
Yeah, XF7, and that was lightened with a grey, it was a light tamiya grey, I forget the colour exactly now. Just to get this uh, off, well it's like a faded red colour, and again this is giving a UMP wash, you look on the close up cam, you can see there where we're done. Uh, again, subtle weathering, got some exhaust stain on the side, done with highly thin tamiya smoke, with a bit of flat base into it. Uh, the exhausts were resin. They were painted in Vallejo, I think it was red leather colour. I'll tell you now, because I've got the paint right next to me. They were, yeah, base uh, painted in Vallejo, uh, red leather, and then um, a thinned X, XF1, yeah, XF1 thin paint wash over the top just to make it look. Burnt and the effect's quite good, and then like I say, I've airbrushed Tamiya smoke just behind, only a little bit, just to give some exhaust staining. Uh, antenna wires were put on, the little one behind the rear canopy uh, was stretched sprue, and the one on top was uh, Easy Line. I'm not sure if we have any, um, I forget what they're called now, little bobbles on either end. I'll look into that, maybe add it. I completely forgot about that to be honest. But overall, um, the canopies went down well, they don't quite fit, they're a little bit wide. And where I've glued it, the squoze, squoze, there you go, is that word again, themselves out a little bit, especially that front one, you can see it just there. But there's not much you could do about that now. I could take it all off, but it'd probably make more mess than good. The resin exhaust are very nice, really well detailed. Uh, oh, God, there's a nose coming off. So it wasn't attached, it was loose. As he drops it, we spin around. Uh, resin wheel bays, not too bad, not too bad at all. Landing going quite well. That's gone down well. Bit of Citadel Mithril Silver. Citadel, sorry, Mithril Silver and a Darta pin wash. The wheels I flattered myself. Uh, I used the kit wheels, and you see they're a little bit off centre. That one's better. Uh, heated them, we'll push them down on a hard plastic surface, and it's given it that weighted look feel. Uh, not much else underneath. Uh, resin rear landing gear. The decals, um, probably the quickest decals I've ever seen to come off the backing paper. Literally a couple of seconds in the water, and off they came. Uh, but very very delicate, they tore unbelievably easy. I, hate, I even had to delve into my other kit, I've got the submarine version, to get one of these walkway ones to replace it. So I'll have to st um, mask and paint those on my other kit because I stole this one from the kit. But they've gone down well, there's not only no silvering, uh, the solver set absolutely hammered them and really set them well. And it's been an enjoyable, you know, different build. The kit um, went together, no problem at all, and in fact I bought another one today, I got a Corsair racer, so obviously not that bad a kit to build, but definitely not for the beginner, definitely somebody a bit more uh, modelling skill under the belt, um, but different scheme as well, nice enough to do camouflage, uh, and I think it's quite well, it's quite a striking looking aircraft, because they were drones, they were really controlled. They were flown by three operatives, I believe, two on the ground, one falling behind in a plane. So it took three men to fly them by radio control. And you just target drones. In my opinion, all the pictures I've seen shows them to be really clean aircraft. So that's why I've not heavily weathered it. And being a target drone, I don't think it'll lasted that long either. But if they did, then that's by the by. It's my interpretation of it. Um, would I recommend it? Yes, like I say, to somebody who's got a bit of modelling skill, I would definitely recommend one of the special hobby kits. Certainly go out and have a look. Uh, there's loads of them, literally loads. Well, probably upwards of a hundred different kits to do. I've just got this Corsair kit. I don't think I can grab it easily enough. No, it's at the bottom. I'm not going to muck about. Um, but I'm looking forward to building that. And like I say, to anybody with a bit more modern experience, definitely recommend this. It'll certainly test your skills. Um, and that's it, really. So, not much else to say. Um, nice to review from start to finish. Like I say, 10 days, not too bad. Um, my first review doing this. Hopefully, I can do some more. Not every time, but over the you know coming months, we can pick all the kits, review them, build them, and come back at the end and review how they actually build. So there you go. Definitely a recommend to me as long as you're up for a bit of a challenge. Um, certainly a yeah, skill builder. So there you go. So thanks for watching, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the review slash build slash commentary. I'll put a little slideshow up at the end that goes all through the build because I've taken pictures every step of the way. And uh, you can have a look at the build and pictures. There's not loads, but there's a few there to show it as it goes through. So thanks for watching. Catch you around, and I'll see you guys soon.